Hello guys and welcome. How is everyone doing today? I hope you're all doing great. Today I will show you how to create a village from scratch and it doesn't even matter which biome you pick. However, there are a few things that you need to organize before you start your village. What we need first is we need to actually find the village so we can get the villagers from. So here we are now in the plains and let's see if there's a village. Oh, over there's a village. So let's get over there and see how the population is and if there are no villagers so we can at least take two. Because you can start a village with two villagers, you don't need more than that. So yeah, let's see. Plains villages are usually quite huge and have a lot of population and many buildings. So let's see how this one is. Oh wow, that's a nice one. This one seems really big, many buildings. There's already an iron golem, interesting. So yeah, once you have located a village like this one, what you need to do next is, you need to make sure you have like one of the biomes nearby or locations where you want to create a village in. I mean, there are always ways to also move uh, villagers, like not just uh, through land, but yeah. For example, here's a birch forest. If you want to like build in the birch forest, you can also make there a village on the mountains over there. But today I want to look for uh, another biome. Let's see, what do we have here? Okay, a lot of forest, rivers. I don't want to make a river village. What else is there? Oh, there's a swamp. That's interesting. I mean, we could go for a swamp. But yeah, there's something unique about the swamp. If you breed their villagers, you can actually get a unique skin, the swamp village, villager skin. Like some biomes like the jungle or swamp have their own unique skin. So if you breed their like plains villagers, you have a chance to get the unique swamp skin. What well, looks really cool. I've created one in the past. If you follow my Let's Play series, you can also see my swamp village. But yeah, we're not going for the swamp today. Let's pick... Hmm. Okay, a dark oak forest would be nice, but this one is too small. There's a lot of plains here, and I think those are sunflower fields. What is there? Oh, wow. There's a huge dark oak forest. Okay. Let's say, for some reason, your most favorite pile where you also want to have the village in is the dark oak forest because you just love the dark oak forest because I guess it's dark, it's it's mysterious. Like, for some reason, you just want to have like a village there. Now you need to find a good location. I would go for something that's more flat unless you don't mind working with the terrain. But flat areas are really good. It looks like over there is a bit flat, right? So let's look. Oh yeah, that's really flat. I've already built some houses, by the way, so it doesn't take so long. And I've picked Dark Oak Forest for today's tutorial. And the issue is when you start like a village that there can be a lot of threats, right? So you really need to make sure you have like a, a spacious house and there's a lot of light nearby, or especially at the entrance of the buildings. So you don't have a mobs attack, right? I would go for a bigger building and a smaller one and try to go for six beds if you can or even more so yeah here i've placed four beds and in the other building i have two more beds so in total i have six beds if you want to have like more beds you can also make like double or triple beds and, and just just like line up beds like doesn't matter i usually start with a fletcher table I mean a fletching table and a toolsmith table and I will explain you why in a, in a second. And what's also really good is composters. Because farmers, like they can self-breed themselves. So you don't need to breed them manually. And yeah, here are the two beds that I just mentioned. And it's nothing special, just a small house. And you need me to make sure this is also safe. If you have cliffs, fence the cliffs so the villagers can't fall. And if you are like here in a dark oak forest or you are like in a very very wide area, try to put a lot of torches around so mobs won't spawn. Because you don't want your first two villagers to be attacked and then you end up with just having one villager and then you need to move the villagers again. It can be quite time consuming to move villagers, it's not always that simple. And you just want to be safe, right? So you don't have to do everything all over again. 
And once this area is lit and safe and you also fenced cliffs so they can't uh, fall down holes. You need to also start a farm nearby because at the beginning you usually need to manually breed. So make sure you bring some carrots or potatoes, in my case those are carrots, and then start a farm nearby the village. But in an area where the, where the farmer can't access it because otherwise they're gonna take your carrots. So start like some carrot or potatoes farm and use them for breeding. Okay, we are back now at the plains village and I us grab two villagers and move them to the dark oak forest. Let me quickly show you how I usually move villagers and for that I'm using a boat. So you need to find the villager that you want to take. The best one is one without profession, but here everyone seems to have a profession. Okay, that sucks. Anyway, you need to place a boat in front of, of a villager. Oh, they're going the wrong way. And they will get stuck in this one and they can't get out. Okay, I will push this one in. Go in, go in. Where are you going? No, you go in. Go in there. I need to move you. Okay, he's stuck now. And now you can move the villager. Let's move him. It is slow, so if you are not using a nether hub, and I will explain you in a moment what a nether hub is, then it's better you bring also a bed. <laughs> Don't we look funny together in this boat? Oh wow. Yeah, then let's break the boat. And let me show you two ways to move villagers. So the first one is... Oh, here they are, the two villagers that I placed. So the first one is like I showed, the boat. And you can get one villager in a boat and you can move him that way. It's very simple and it's very cheap. And yeah, there's a second one, the minecart. You can also uh, put rails down and move on with the minecart. And you can push the minecart and that way you can push the villager. Or if you have like two minecarts, you can push both. And as you guys can see, he's moving. Okay, let's make a stopper here. Okay. This can also be really quick and it's actually way faster than with a boat, but it's really complicated. So for today, we're gonna use a boat to move the villagers. So, yeah. And what I mentioned earlier is the nether hub. It's actually really good for long distances, like in our case, cause the dark oak forest is very far. And you can actually move villagers through the nether, through the nether portal. But it needs to be on a high level where it's safe. I usually make my nether hub on layer 119, that's why I start and I usually move my portal up. So you basically break the old portal on the ground and move up on layer 119. And yeah. Oh wow, we look so funny. Oh, I messed up. Okay, I need to go back, I need to break the boat. Because you can't move them while they're still in the boat. You need to break the boat while it's near the puddle. It will automatically happen. Okay. Great. Now you quickly need to place a boat back down. Otherwise the villager could escape. Oh no. Why is he not getting in there? <gasps> okay. Let's try again. Go in there. Okay. Now he's in. I pushed him in. So yeah, let's let's move the villager to the Dark Oak uh, village that we are about to start. Okay, here. Dark Oak village. That's the right direction. Yep. It's actually very, very time consuming though. If you have blue eyes and, and, and you put it on the ground, it's actually way faster. But we don't have blue eyes, so we're moving like that. Oh wow. This villager looks so terrified. He's even turning his head. He's like going through hell right now. That's probably what he's thinking. It looks so funny moving villagers with the boat, right? Okay, we can already see the portal. We've almost reached our destination. Next stop, Dark Oak Forest. Alright, let's break the boat. This time I want the villager to go in first. No, where do you think you're going? No! Okay, I need to push him. I hope it works. Yes, he disappeared. That's a good sign. Okay. Uh, wait! Where are you going? Did he just climb up a tree? Did you really just climb up a tree? Where do you think you're going? The house is not on this side, it's on the other side. Okay, let me get him back into the boat. Go in. Do I have to push you? Yes, I do. Okay, he's back in. Let's go down. Okay. Where was the house again? I think I'm going the right direction. I just need to find torches. Because I've placed down quite many torches. Oh, there are torches. That's the right direction. Let's break this. 
can already see the house. Soon we are uh, close enough for the villagers range and he will detect the bed and the working stations. So we should be pretty safe and there are many torches. I don't think monsters can spawn. It's very important to make the village safe or the first house. You could always also block the door by the way. Like or go with the iron door. And then you need a button to open it. Okay, he's detecting it. That's good. Oh, he already took the profession. It's actually good that he's a toolsmith. You can get a bell from a toolsmith, by the way. Alright. I got some emeralds now. And I will show you how to get a bell. I already have one in my inventory, but I want to show you. So you do a lot of... It's actually cheap because they want just one emerald for a stone tool. And you can always, like, get rid of it. If you already have emeralds, it's good. If not, uh... You go with the Fletcher and you make a tree farm. The Fletcher is one of the easiest villagers to trade with because to get sticks is quite easy. You just need uh, some some logs and that's all. And turn it into planks and then sticks. Now he will level up and the next trade will be a bell. Now look at this. Once he's leveled up I'll show you. And then for 32 emeralds a bell. It's quite expensive so you maybe need to trade for a while. But hey. It's cool. Now we have a bell. The cool thing is about the bell is the bell becomes the gathering point of a village. So if you place down a bell somewhere, that's where they will gather. Let's place down a bell here. Um, yeah, so they will gather here. But maybe I don't want it on the ground. Maybe I put it on top. Yeah, let's put it on top. Let's break that one. Okay. So they will gather there when the time is ready. Okay, now we have two villagers, and why is the zombie still attacking? Why is the zombie attacking? I'm confused. I need to put down more torches. I thought this arrow is light enough. Oh, okay, maybe this corner? Could that be why? Zombies have a crazy range, unlike skeletons. Like, like zombies, they can be even 40 blocks away or something. They're still gonna attack a villager, so... You're gonna need a lot of torches. So try to farm a lot of coal. Oh wow. And yeah, make sure to give carrots to your villagers so they breed with each other. Okay, this one got some. Where's the other one? Hey! Where did you go? One is missing. Where's the other one? Oh, here he is. Now, take this please. No! Yeah, it can be sometimes tricky because... Yeah. Where are you? Okay, I don't want to trade. I want to give you the carrots. Please pick them up. Okay, I will just throw them at you like that. Okay, just take them. Take the carrots, dude. Nice, he took them. I think those are enough. I mean, let's give him some more just to be safe. Great, they have both enough carrots now for breeding. Now we just need to wait for the gathering time. And then they will breed and we will have our third villager. And... Okay, gathering time should happen any second. Let's see, are they gonna gather now? <gasps> the first one is coming. That's the farmer one. And now the toolsmith is coming. Are they gonna flirt with each other and there will be love in the air? Like if those hard particles come, and those hard signs, that's when they will breed. So let's see. Usually they, they gossip for several minutes or seconds. Oh, and they even exchange carrots, that's great. So one had like too many carrots. I guess it was the farmer because I gave him so many. And now they both have a lot of carrots. And they can breed. Now they stare at each other. Will the hearts come? Ah, uh, okay. They didn't come yet. Let's wait some more. <gasps> okay, will it happen now? Oh, that's looking good. They are really staring at each other. And they are so close to each other. That's a good sign. If they are standing very close to each other and they stare at each other, that's usually when it happens. Um... Okay, they're rushing to each other. What will happen now? Will it happen? <gasps> it's happening! The hearts are appearing! Oh, they are breeding. And, and we have six beds and two villagers. I'm pretty sure this will work. Let's see. Will this result in a third villager? Please? Oh! It worked! We have now a baby villager. No, I don't want to trade. Oh, yeah. There he is. Our third one. 
Like it's good to start with five or six before you build more buildings because you don't want to lose those. Oh, and uh, yeah, if the children get carrots, like in this case, they're gonna breed. Uh, they're gonna grow fast. And yeah, go for two blocks. You need two blocks of height. Because the thing about uh, baby villages is they will jump by two blocks. So for them to use a bed, you need two blocks. Okay, let's sleep. Oh, okay. Great. So yeah, make sure if you make those buildings, go for two blocks over the bed. So you need a house that is at least three blocks high because the bed will occupy one block and then you need two additional ones. And yeah, this seems pretty safe. It's good to have two farmers because you can automatically breed them because because they're going to get those carrots and potatoes. Like uh, here, I do have one side carrots and one is potatoes. Here are potatoes and the other side carrots. Yep. And... Once they spend some time here and got enough carrots and potatoes from farming, they will share this like we saw earlier with the other villagers. You can also do tradings and level them up and they become willing from that as well, but to feed them carrots and potatoes is a way faster process. Yeah, oh wow, it's such a huge area. If I want to, I can turn this into a kingdom and, and place a wall around and add so many more buildings. Like this one is way bigger. Like there's so much freedom for building. That's why I always say it's important to find the right spot for a village that you want to start from scratch. And this one is pretty flat. That's really cool. Yeah, guys. I hope this tutorial, this guide was useful for you. How to start a village from scratch. If you guys are new to the channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content. And I would also really appreciate if you like this video and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out any new video. And are you guys excited to start your first village? <coughs> Excuse me. Or maybe your first kingdom project like I do. Like this is so fun and villages really add to the game. I love villagers. It's fun trading with them. And I wish everyone a wonderful day. And... I will see you guys next time.